Amen. He died and was buried and rose on the third day. And we've come to celebrate his resurrection. And if you've come today to lift up his name and celebrate him, give him your best praise. Give him your best shout. Give him your best horn. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's alive forevermore. Hey, I got news. I, I shared a little thing this morning. But I went over there and went into where they thought the tomb would have been. And I like what our pastor says. I got a news flash. He ain't there. Amen. He ain't there. And I got news for you. He ain't ever going to be there. They can dig around all they want. They can look for the bones all they want. They can waste millions and billions of dollars looking for Jesus Christ. But one day, they won't find him in no grave. But I got news for you. He's coming back one day for those who have made themselves ready. Those who have put themselves in the right relationship with him. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Give him a praise this morning. Give great this Easter. This resurrection morning. Woo. My, I can't help but get excited. Come on now. Paul said it this way. He said, if it wasn't, if he did not raise from the dead, then our faith is in vain. I got news for you. My faith ain't in vain because I know without a shadow of a doubt, he is alive. You say, how do you know? Because he lives right down in here, inside of here. Amen. Amen. One more time and we're going to pray. But give him a good praise this morning. Amen. 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 A few quick announcements and we're going to pray and we're going to get into our worship service. Don't forget, please stay in your cars. No congregating after service or before service. And if you do have to use the restroom, please be mindful and give distance. Six foot, 12 foot, whatever makes you feel comfortable. So uh, we have restrooms up here. We've got restrooms in the fellowship hall. Oh, yeah, well, you may need to use the restrooms in the fellowship hall because you'll run over our musicians in here. You won't have room. So uh, we have restrooms there. We have restrooms in that bottom door uh, So, because you won't be doing social distancing if you go into the door there. They're all right there playing for us this morning. Hey, can we give our worship team a good hand and a good praise this morning for fighting the weather? Amen. Amen. This morning, let's pray. Let's invite God into this service. Let's invite God into this place. Let's continue to pray for our country. Let's continue to pray for our nation and pray for our leaders that are leading us in this moment. Let's ask God this morning to stop this disease and this virus and open up his windows of healing power that we can come together and congregate like we once did. And, and let's pray for those who are sick and those who have lost families in this pandemic. So let's pray today. Father, we come to you this morning, first and foremost, giving you thanksgiving, God. You, for all that you've done in our life, for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness, Lord, we thank you, God, for your many blessings, God. We thank you, God, that you died and rose on the third day, that we might have eternal life this day, God. And Lord, we ask you, God, to be in all the singers and musicians, God. Anoint them with an anointing like they've never felt before, Father Lord. God, anoint their worship, anoint their praise today, Father God, as they lead us into your gates and into your courts this morning, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask you to anoint our pastors. He brings forth the word, God. Anoint the word. Let it go forth and do its work this morning, Father Lord God. God, save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost, heal, deliver, strengthen, and encourage in this place today, Father Lord. And God, we come to you. As men and women of God, binding our faith, God, asking you, God, to move upon this virus, God, asking you to bind it today, Father God, and, and eradicate it out of our land, Father God, and loose your healing power, God. Let it go forth and begin to heal, God, right now in a mighty and miraculous and powerful way. Today, God, that we celebrate your resurrection, begin to do your work, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask you to be with those who are sick with this virus or sick with any other ailments or diseases, Father God. Heal them today, Father Lord. Lord, be with those who have lost family members recently, God. Touch them and help them, Father God. And God, most importantly, let your will and your way be done in this service today, God. For we come to get into the presence of yourself, God, of the living God today, Father Lord. And we ask you, God, right now that you have your will and your way in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen.
compares in comparison to knowing that my Lord and my Savior, my Redeemer is still alive. The healer is still alive. The deliverer is still alive. The soon coming King is still alive. Amen. Woo. All right. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to get under here and start drinking a little bit more. I'd hate to meld any further. I'm short enough. Amen. Y'all didn't think it was funny, did you? That's okay. <laughs> Oh, you're laughing in your car. Okay, I understand. Oh, but uh, I got to move. I get carried away. We're going to take up our tithes and offering today in, the, in our fifth team. Hey, can we give our fifth team a good hand or a good horn blow for how hard they work? They've had to do a lot of different tasks. Praise the Lord. They're going to carry five-gallon buckets, so fill them up. Amen. <laughs> Just kidding. But if you can, that'd be great. Hey, don't forget to give your tithes. I mean, no, even in this time, we can't afford not to give our tithes and offerings. And our offering because everything we're doing is going forward to help. At times, we've helped a few families in the food pantry. We've helped people. We've helped food and other situations. So please, please, please remember to give as you always have. Also, continue to remember to give uh, the in South America, Brother Mike Eaton's kids down there. So please remember, if you made a commitment to give that, please continue to give in that. Also, uh, let's remember all that. Let's remember our tithes, remember our offerings. Amen. How many know giving is a part of worship? Oh, good church. All right, got a few of you. Well, Ken, you need to read your Bible. I'm just kidding. Don't forget your KJs. If you got KJs, Sheriff has got his car ready. If you, if they are KJs, as the ladies come around or the men come around, please just let them know those are KJs and they'll make sure he gets them. Okay, because he always needs a little help. Yeah, he said a little help. Oh, that's more than a little help. says more than a little help. <laughs> so, but let's remember that. So with all that being said, hey, let's say this. If you, if you want to, I almost forgot. You can go online and give, you can go text to give, you can go on Facebook and give, you can go on the website and give. So if you're not if you don't want to give or not I didn't bring it today, please give on those things. And I think in our faith in our giving things there's little what's that thing called? Tags or buttons or whatever. I'm I'm, a, I'm low tech. But you can deviate where you want it, you know, as far as your ties, if you give it to the to the kids or if you give it to the food pantry, please just click on those. So with all that being said, let's pray. Amen. How many know that no matter what happens in this world, God is still in control? Amen. Amen. I know a few people, are, their job situations are uncertain and unquestionable. But understand this, you cannot outgive God. Amen. You can't. And how many know and understand this? I'm going to share this and we're going to pray. I never forget when the recession hit in 2008, they started cutting our hours back. And I don't know about you, but I need all the hours I can get and as many more as I can get because we live that way. And I begin to get a little nervous. I won't lie. I begin to grip my heart and I'm thinking, Lord, how are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to get this done? And I begin to pray. And one day, I'll never forget it. It was like the Lord spoke to my heart. I've shared it before. But he said, hey, they are not your provider. He said, I am. 
How many know and understand that God is your provider even in this time? Let's give Him the praise. He's your provider. Not your company, not the government. He is your provider. So let's remember to give tonight or this morning, and, and then you can give a number of ways, and then they come by to, to take up your tithes and offering this morning. So let's pray. Father, we come to you today, God, thanking you first and foremost for your many blessings, God. Thanking you, God, that you honor your word, God. You said if we would give, it would be given back unto us, full measure, running over, shaking down. God, we stand upon the truth of your word, God. And these and God, we ask you to take the tithes, we ask you to take the offerings, God. Multiply it for the use of your kingdom, God. That people will be saved and sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, healed, delivered, strengthened, encouraged, and set free and helped through the ministries that go outside this church and inside this church, Father. And Lord, we ask you to bless the gift and the giver today as they give, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Lord to get home. Happy Easter to everybody. All right, let's take care of our business right quick before we get into the message. Jerry never did bring my iPad out here, so he's got it. Okay, uh, he's got me covered. All right, good to see you out on a wet Easter Sunday morning. Uh, we've been giving away some toilet paper for for a while. Amen. And. Uh, how many, has anybody got seven or more in their car? Della's got seven. Can somebody please beat her for me? Nobody got seven, eight. Anybody got 10 or 12? Hey, there's one thing about it. This girl ain't never gonna run out of toilet paper, amen? Let's give Della a good honk. She won again. Anybody got six? Five. Blow your horn. Five. Huh? All right. Hey, I'm going to give you that enviable task. Divide it out between them. I think there's three of them. <laughs> hey, it's good to see you out on a Easter Sunday morning. This is the probably the, the oddest service, amen, that I've ever been a, a part of, uh, and especially with the echo. I hope you're not echoing. Can everybody hear me good? All right. Praise the Lord. Reach down. Pick up your Bible, your phone, or your iPad, or whatever it is you have your Bible on, and turn with me to the book of John chapter 20. Amen. I think we ought to give our praise and worship team a good haunt for helping us. It's better than ever. And I know it's a lot of aggravation on them, but they are, they are persevering. And they have tenacity, so they're still helping us. Amen. Amen. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 1. I'm just going to read uh, the first eight verses. I was this morning as I was watching uh, our assistant pastor as he brought our uh, message this morning. I was watching and I started to laugh when he called out his scripture because I remember a time when, uh, when I was assistant pastor and I always had the same scripture as my pastor. And I started laughing because this is the same scripture I've got. Amen. John chapter 20, verse 1. Uh, if you're there, toot your horn. The first day of the week, come with Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark under the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the, other, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lying. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and he believed. Stretch your hand toward me and pray with me for me. Father, we bless you. We're so thankful for what today represents. God, we're asking you, Lord, right now to touch our hearts. God, I pray for each and every one that's here and those that are watching by Facebook, Lord. If there's one today, Lord, who don't know you as their personal Savior, I ask you right now, God, to begin to move on them. Touch them by your Spirit. For those that are backslidden and away from you, let today be a day of new beginnings. And Father, we give you praise and honor and glory. And everybody, blow the horn. Yeah. Wow. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for coming. Amen. Rain or shine, you got to have a made-up mind. Amen. And I'm so glad today to announce to you, as our assistant pastor said, Brother Philip. Uh, it's not been maybe a month ago that we were in the tomb. I came out of the tomb. I was teasing and uh, for, with some new friends that I met over there. And uh, they said, tell us the truth. Is he in there? I said, spoiler alert. I said, spoiler alert. I said, he's not in the tomb anymore. Amen. And I thank God today that we serve a risen Savior. Amen. I want you to understand this. We talk a whole lot about other other gods that people serve all over the world. And I was watching I was watching a show last night. They were... They were getting off into more of the Asia style of worship. 
of other gods over in there, and they serve many, many gods, amen. But the only God, amen, the only true and living God, amen, is alive today, amen. I, I, I thought about this, and I know I've shared it with you before, but it's been 20 years ago, and I, I, I went over to China on a missionary uh, trip, and we went in, amen, uh, to Tiananmen Square, and as we went in right across from it over there, uh, Chairman Mao was there, amen. He he was in, he was being chemically preserved forever, and chem, and, and he said, uh, Chairman Mao had said just prior to his death, he said, I am God, and he declared, he made the decree that he was God. He didn't live very long after that, amen. And, he, and, and as I walked in, in every language known to man, it said, take your hat off and keep your mouth shut. That's what it said. And as I walked by a glass coffin and I looked at a man with a sour look on his face, I realized, amen, that he was not God, amen, because he was dead. And I, I saw people that were that were bowing to his, to his statue outside, laying flowers at his feet. They would weep because they thought that their God was dead. But I want you to understand their God is dead, if that's their God, amen. Chairman Mao, amen, one day we'll, we'll bow his knee uh, to the same one we'll bow our knee, every knee's going to bow, and every tongue's going to confess today, amen, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want you to understand with me, I don't want to get too preachy too fast, I want you to understand today, amen, that there is, there is a God, amen, and he did send his son, and he died on the cross for you and I, this is a little extra, won't cost you anything, but he also, not only did he pay sin's penalty, he sealed the deal, amen, when he arose from the grave, amen. He said, I have power to lay my life down, and I have power to take it up again. I've known a lot of people that have taken their own life, amen. Through, through my life, I've seen a lot of people that went that route and took their own life, but they didn't have power to take it back up again. And Jesus, amen, he had power to take up his own life. He gave his life, amen, and he resurrected, amen. In John chapter 20, we find the story, our Easter story of the empty tomb, amen. And but when you begin to look a little further, you discover some things. Three people and how each of them viewed the resurrection. Jesus had been in the grave for three days. After that, they'd taken him off the cross. They, 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 after, they wrapped him in his body in a linen grave clothes and laid him in Joseph's new tomb. And then it was now Sunday, the first day of the week, when Mary Magdalene showed up at the sepulcher. When she got there, the stone was taken away and Jesus' body was not there. She ran back and found Peter and John and said they've taken his body and we don't know where they've laid him. I, I thought about this as, as, as I was listening to Brother Philip this morning, amen. She was so distraught because she said, we don't know where they've taken my Lord, amen. She said, my Lord has died and now somebody has taken him away. I, I want you to understand what a sad thought that would be today, amen. We wouldn't even be here today if it weren't for the resurrection. It'd be a sad thing to think this morning, amen, that our Lord and our Savior is still dead, amen. I want you to know, amen, that I saw people on television just a while back that had gave their whole life, amen, and they were determined they were going to find the bones of Christ. I said they'll dig till they're old and gray and die and they'll never find him, amen, and she was weeping because she had lost hope. She had, she was weeping. See, in America, we're living in a terrible time right now, and there's a lot of weeping that's going on. Suicide rates are going through the roof, amen, and people are losing hope, and she was weeping because all of the hope that she had was lost, amen. And, it's, and, and, and so she runs to get some help. In her perception, in her mind, amen, she couldn't remember probably that he'd said, that, that he'd said he was going to arise again on the third day. She, maybe she couldn't remember through all of the stress that she'd been through. She had forgotten some things, amen, maybe. And she wants to get Peter and John because she feels like her mind, somebody stole him away, amen. And as we read on into the story, amen, uh, uh, Brother uh, brother John, uh, which is writing the story, he outruns Peter to get there. And verse 8 said that he believed. So he had a different perspective. Perspective. He must have known and understood that what Christ said he meant, amen. He said, he, he said, on the third day, I will arise. He, it must have came back to him. I don't think we, I don't think Peter really does say, I don't think Peter really know, knew what to say. It's, it's interesting, though, uh, that, that though Mary, Peter, and John witnessed the same tune, their responses were very different, amen. Uh, and and I, I want to know what you think today about an empty tomb. Some of you may never get a chance to go over there. I've been fortunate enough 
to be there two different times. Amen. First time I was there, I got to preach there. That was, I, I want you to understand, if you're a preacher, that is the ultimate. Amen. It, I don't care. I, I'd rather preach there as for any preacher in the world. Standing where Christ rose. Amen. Where our faith was reborn. Where we lost hope at Calvary on the dark day when the sun refused to shine and the Son of God died for you and for me. Amen. I want you to understand it was a dark and a horrible and a terrible day. But there's a good day coming three days later. Somebody sitting under the sound of my voice or listening to my Facebook has given up on life. Listen to me just for a moment, men and women of God and people of, of God. Listen to me just for a second. This will not last forever. Just as the rains have come and the rains have gone and they're expecting them to come back. Amen. One day after a while, the S-O-N will shine again in your life. In your name. Praise the Lord. Amen. But one saw him as dead and having to be moved around. Another one saw him, believed that he had arose. We don't know what Peter thought. Amen. But, but, but we know today, I want you to understand that this is what I see. I see a God that's alive. He, he's not dead. He's alive. Amen. There's an empty tomb in Jerusalem to, pro to prove it. Amen. I don't know about other people's gods, but I know that our God today is alive. And then we can go through the scenarios of all the names of the gods that's worshipped today, and all of them have a burial place, or, or all of them had a time that they existed and gone, don't even know where they're buried at, amen? But we know this one thing, amen? Above 500 people saw him after the resurrection, and there's proof, amen? Undoubtable proof that Jesus Christ arose from the grave. Being that is the fact, amen? I come to declare to you, amen, that not only did he arise, and he is alive, he is alive forevermore, amen, amen. I want you to understand with me today, because he lives, I felt my help come up in here, help me, Lord, before I fall off this thing. And because he lives, children of God, because he overcame the cross, because he overcame the whipping post, because he overcame the grave, the spirit of the overcomer lives down on the inside of you and me. Therefore, you can overcome sickness. You can overcome sin. You can overcome the, the, the divorce. You can overcome these things. Alcohol cannot hold it alive. Amen. I want you to understand the overcomer lives on the inside of us and we can get
children. I see a God that's alive. Amen. I see a, I not only see a God that's alive with all power. He didn't get up. He didn't get up like he went down. He went down. I, I heard somebody say this. I'm borrow this. I, I wish I could remember. I'd give him credit for it, but I ain't going to mention it. I heard it next time I said it. It was so good. They said there was so much life in Jesus Christ. He had to stop talking to die. And they man, he, nobody took his life. He gave his life. And he didn't get up like he went down. He went down in weakness. And he went down. He was the lamb. But when he arose, he arose with all power and glory. He arose. Amen. No, he didn't, he didn't arise as a little sniveling lamb that was weak. He arose the lion of the tribe of Judah. He arose our intercessor that sits at the right hand of his power. He arose with all power and all Say amen. My goodness. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get away from that part, but I can't help it. He, he arose triumphant over his enemies and foes. Amen. Uh, he, he got up, amen, against all odds. Amen. They, they set in order, amen, uh, a watch to make sure, amen, that he wasn't going to get out of the tomb. Amen. You know the story. I, I'm, I'm going to move in a minute. But they set a watch, amen, uh, just because they wanted him to stay dead. There's a lot of people don't want to believe that he's alive. There's a lot of people that don't want to believe on him. They call his mama bad names. I've, I've heard people say that in other countries. They call Mary bad names and say she was what, what, what we say she was, amen. And, 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 and they don't want to believe in him. But I want you to understand this, amen. When he got up, amen, he got up with all power. He got up with all authority. And he got up. He might have went down. He was sown in weakness, but he was raised in power, amen. And I come to tell you today, if you're, if you're lost today, call upon him that is able to bring you out of that dead state, amen. We were born in sin. And if we die in sin, we'll lose our souls to eternity in hell. But if we'll believe on him, amen, if we'll call out to him that overcome death and overcome hell and overcame the grave, we can be saved and we can be in heaven with him one day. If you believe it, give him a good praise. I see a, I see an enemy. I see an enemy. I see an enemy that's defeated today. Amen. He's known in the scriptures by many names. The dragon, Satan, serpent, adversary, devil, wicked one. Through his hatred toward God, sin came as he attacks God, as he attacked God's very creation. Romans 5 and 12 said, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sin. You know what that means? All means all. Every one of us, amen, were sold under sin's bondage. Every one of us were born with a nature to sin. You never have to, you know what? They never offer a class in, in kindergarten on how to tell a lie. They never offer a class in kindergarten. You never have to teach a little kid how to, st uh, how to steal, amen? It, it, the, the, it's our nature. See, that's the problem I have with religion. Religion will patty cake with the sin, uh, with the, with the sin of the flesh and say it's okay but I want you to understand that I believe that if any man be in Christ he's a new creature all things will be passed away and behold all things become new I believe today that if Christ the overcomer lives in you you can get up I believe that you can come out from among the world and be separated amen but the enemy wants you to believe that if you were born this way and you have to live this way and you have to stay this way but I come to tell you today and all of the rebellion of the devil and everything that he's tried to do to destroy you had to destroy me. Jesus Christ defeated him on the cross of Calvary. Somebody please hello. The devil thought he won at Calvary. The cross was his ultimate victory, he thought. He didn't know in three days Jesus was coming out with his keys. The keys to death, hell, and the grave in its hands. Amen. Jesus was dead three days. What did he do from Friday to Sunday? Amen. He invaded his territory. He overcame his power. He destroyed his weapons and he spoiled his house. I put I put this on on Facebook this morning. Colossians 2 and 14 said, Blotting out 
the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. I want you to know there's a book that was being kept on my life, and it was getting thicker by the day. And then page after page, amen, of the things that I had done that was contrary to God and against God was being kept every day and on YouTube. And you know what? If you're lost here today, friend, that book is still being kept on you. But look what he said. He said he's brought out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, nailing it to his cross. Come on, somebody. It was for me. My Savior died. It was my fault that he hung there on the cross. Amen. And it was your fault. Amen. But he took our sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And he shed his blood for you and for me so that the ordinances that were being kept against us are blotted out. If you're a Christian today and you know that you know that you know that you know that your name has been written in the round book of life, give God his praise. The resurrection says to me that the devil is defeated. Hebrews 2 and 14. For as much sin as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy them and have the power of death. That is the devil. I want you to understand with me today. The devil, the only power he has today over you and me is the power of suggestion. He would suggest that you can never be free from alcohol. He would suggest that your marriage will never be fixed. He will suggest that your body will never be healed. And as a man thinks in his heart, so shall it be unto him. The devil knows that. But I want you to understand, I'm persuaded of better things of Jesus. I'm persuaded that he already defeated death. I'm persuaded that if you believe on him, you can come out from alcohol. I am persuaded this morning that if you believe on him, they ain't never made a pill you can't get off of. I am persuaded this morning. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And that whatever you need has already been paid for. And if you believe that, you can receive that. If you believe it, give him a good praise. Let me tell you something else. I'll see you right quick. I see a gospel that's powerful. Colossians 2 and 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the, through the faith and the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. The gospel is more than a story about a death and a burial. It's about a resurrection. This thing is more than just repentance and baptism. And, and you got to have them. You need them. Amen. It's about the power uh, that, that his spirit brings. Romans 6 and 3 said, Know you not that so many as us, uh, of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. That's what baptism represents, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It also says to the world, I took that old man and all his deeds out into a watery grave and I, re and I buried him in a watery grave and he's resurrected a new creature. It said, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into his death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I see a gospel that will change you. Amen. Too many people, amen. Too many people got real cream religion. Just a little dab but do me. They got enough just to, they think to get them by. But I want you to understand, 27 years ago when I got saved, I mean I got radically saved. Those things that I once hated, I loved. And all at once, the things that I loved, I then hated. Amen. There was a new nature that came upon me. Amen. And I, I, I'm not trying to tell you that I was perfect. But I'm trying to tell you that a lot of people are going to miss heaven by 18 inches. They've got it in their head, but it never got to their heart. And the way you can tell it's not in their heart, they cannot control the deeds of the flesh. They'll say yes and amen the gospel. They'll come and lift their hands and weep and they leave out and they forget what manner of man that they were. But I want you to understand I still believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ will change your heart. It will change your life. It will change you from the inside out. Amen. 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 I want you to understand that if you know Jesus, John 1 and 12 said to his leaders, received him. To them gave he power. If you don't have power in your life, maybe you need to receive him. 
I see, a, I see another thing. I see a promise that's beyond description. You know, I, 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 I don't fear death. I, I guess I have some concerns about how I'm going to leave this world. I was riding down the road one time with a preacher friend of mine. And I was trying to get him to a place to preach. And I was doing 85 miles an hour in a rainy day out on 81. And we were rolling up that road. And, I, and a little bitty car and slick tires, and that car picked up, and it turned this way, and it turned that way, and it turned this way, and it turned that way. And it sat right back down. And the old preacher got prayed to all at once right there in my seat. The Bible said, son, saving my fear. And he said, I'm ready to go, brother, but I don't want to go a bloody mess. I don't know by which way that I'm going to leave this world. Amen. But this one thing I see, amen, in the resurrection this morning, I see a promise that's beyond description. Watch this, the empty tomb says he's gone to prepare a place for them that love us. Amen, John 14 and 1. Look what he said. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Can I tell you in a troublesome world right now, amen, can I tell you that when people are, uh, people are losing their mind right now for fear and worry, amen, and you know what, if I didn't know the Lord, I'd be digging a hole somewhere, but I, I got, I got this confidence in him that I know that he's going to bring us through. I know that God has never failed me yet and he's not going to now, but I see this. Amen. I see what he meant in John chapter 14. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Stop being, stop worrying about everything. God is in control of the coronavirus. God is in control of your health. God is in control of your children. That are wayward. Let not your hearts be troubled. He said, you believe in God. Believe also in me. A lot of people believe in God, but they've never given their heart over. Jesus was encouraging his disciples to believe in him. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. He said, you believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house, here's the promise. He said, for in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And look what he said. He said, I'm about to go and prepare a place for you. Come on, somebody. I know we all want to stay here as long as we can. Take care of our children, our homes, our families. The good things that God's given us. But I want you to understand that for 2,000 years, Jesus Christ has been preparing a place for me and you. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you may be also. What's it like? First Corinthians 2 and 9. Said it's, he said, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. John tried his best to describe it. And this is what he said. He said, the city lies four square. He said, it's got 12 foundations, one for each of the apostles, 12 gates, three on each side of the city, walls of jasper, gates of pearl, streets of gold, nothing here will even compare. And John, and, and, and John said, the only, uh, the only way I can describe it is is, is by telling you what's not there. Here's what he said. He said, they won't let me. Every time I start to describe it, he said, the angel of the Lord said, shut up the book. But he said, John said, I can't tell you what's there, but I'll tell you what's not there. He said, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more death, no more tears, no more crying, no more hunger, no more thirst. The sea, sun and moon and night, sin, the deceiver, condemnation, separation and time all those things are gone amen i want you to understand something else that's not in that city coronavirus i'll tell you something else that's not in that city hate i'll tell you something else that is in that city the love and the light of jesus christ if you believe that give god a good place one more little verse got one more little verse Romans 8 and 11 but the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Can, can I tell you what the resurrection means? The resurrection means it's hope for tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow. You know something? Mary got a brand new beginning. On that Easter Sunday morning, Peter and John, they got a brand new beginning. And they went through some horrible, terrible times. And you know something? We've, we've walked through some pretty rough stuff in the last few months together as a country and even as a world. But you know something? 
Can I just tell you, don't let the news media, whichever flavor you like, whichever flavor you're on, whichever side of that thing you're on, you better be on the Lord's side. But can I tell you this? Don't lose hope over watching the hopelessness that they propagate all over television. Stop watching it. Amen? Stop watching that stuff. Because you know something? You and I have a hope. I heard a preacher preach this morning. He said, the best is yet to come. And, amen. Praise the Lord. Can, thank you, man. can I say this before we... Can I, can I say this? If you don't know and you don't have that peace in your life and you don't have that hope on the inside of you, today would be the, would be the worst day to drive out of here and not get it. Hey, I had a preacher tell me one time, I was, well, he was talking to the whole congregation. It was on an Easter Sunday morning. And I sat back, and, uh, and, and he gave me a hundred call, and the Lord dealt with my heart. And I held on and wouldn't go. I had, I had, I had meanness on my mind. I was 13 years old. And I said, one more week, and I'll, I'll go the next week. And you know something, I left out of there, and I come back the next week. I did just what I said. But God wasn't dealing with me that way. And I went till I was 23 years old before I met the man. Can I, can I encourage you today that if the Lord is dealing with your heart, don't leave this place. I, I got another opportunity. You may not ever get I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to know this, that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we have hope to Praise the Lord. Give him a good day. set up our sound and help us and sing. And I thank God you're here, but most of all, I thank God for the resurrection and the hope that's in Christ today. Please, I'm, I know you're in your car and you do whatever you want to, but would you bow your heads with me just for a moment? Let me ask you this. While nobody's looking around, I feel the presence of the Lord moving through this part. after that, I was in the pastor's office and I said, something's wrong with my salvation. I said, I didn't get something. I said, but I still got the same old nature I always had. I knew a 13 year old that Christ would change your heart. Let me ask you this. Is there any here today that does not know Jesus as your personal Savior? And you'd like today to let him come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. If you're here, would you let it be known by the let you turn your flashers on. And I promise somebody will come to you. We will pray until your heart is satisfied that all your sins have been washed away under the blood of life. Is there anybody? I'm taken by this today that everybody here is in a right relationship with the Lord. Listen, please don't leave this place. I'm prepared to meet Christ. Listen, I'm, I'm not a doom and gloom, and I really get aggravated at these preachers that, that take the opportunity to jump up and try to scare people. I'm not here to try to scare you. I'm here to try to help you find that fountain of living water that I found all those years ago, almost three decades ago. Hey, if you're here today and you're sick in your body and you want special prayer, will you turn on your lights? Turn on your flashers. We're gonna come. We got we got the it's first impressions team, the fit team, and they're walking through the parking lot right now. Would you come? Would, would you would you turn on your lights as they come, I should say. As they come to have special prayer with you and believe God for you. Hey girls, over to your right. 
So you better turn right, right there. Come right down through there. Right down there. Black truck. There you go. There you go. Come on. Saints of God, be praying. I know there's people here today that need the Lord. Hey, can I tell you this? We were all, all of us that, were, that are born again right now, all of us were in that same place at one time. And we had we had the Lord deal with our hearts. And we felt unworthy. And we felt like we'd been so bad that God didn't love us. And you know what? He took us just like we was. Washed us in His blood. Came in our hearts. Made His abode. Changed our natures. Amen. He'll do the same for you today. Anybody need special prayer for anything today? There's, they're praying with some people right now. But if you need special prayer for anything, sickness in your body, we don't care what it is. If you need to be delivered, we believe it. We'll lay hands on you. May have rubber gloves on, but we'll lay hands on you. And we will believe God to set you free today. Amen. Let's all pray together. Father, we love you today. We're so thankful for the hope that we have in, this, in, in the resurrection. So thankful that we are serving a God today that's alive. And God, not only are you alive, but you're more than able to meet the needs of the people today. Meet the needs of everyone that's here and watching by Facebook and Internet. Move, God. Show yourself real to them. Deal with their heart. With the same fervency, God, that you reach for me and pull me out of my sins, reach for these people, God. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, today, let the healing virtue of Christ fall into every meeting. All of us, Lord, know somebody that's sick, know somebody that needs healing, somebody that needs to be delivered. God, set the captive free. Lord, today, as, I'm, as we're praying together, Lord, we're praying, God, against this coronavirus. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over our family, our friends, our co-workers. And God, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would push this thing out of our country, out of our world, and raise the people of God back up. And God, when we are allowed to come back into the building, God, let us be ever prepared for those that will come to hear the gospel. God, please, for those that needed to pray today and did, God, don't let this be the last night you deal with them. God, give them other opportunities. Speak to them. Send somebody by their way. Send little people by their way to encourage their hearts to believe on you. God, we're so thankful that you have mercy on us. God, have mercy on each one that says in the day that we accept you as your Savior. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord, for helping me today. Thank you, Lord, for opening our ears to receive the word of God.
word of prayer and we're going to let you go. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise for your word, thanksgiving and praise for the movement of your spirit in this place today, God. God, thank you that you're alive. And not only are you alive, those who are putting their faith and trust in you will live again ourselves, God. You defeated death, hell, and the grave, Father, Lord. And Lord, we ask you to bless our people today, Father God. Bless this nation. Bless this land. Protect us from this virus and this sickness, Father God. And God, we, until we meet again, Father Lord, bless your people and keep them safe, God. And we ask it in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.